When a carbonyl group that has a leaving group attached to it is treated with a nucleophile, nucleophilic substitution happens. But this is not an SN2 reaction. It's a reaction that starts like nucleophilic addition to aldehydes and ketones. And for the same reason, the carbonyl group is polarized and nucleophiles are attracted to the partial positive charge on that carbon. Typical leaving groups include chloride, bromide, carboxylate, thiolate, this is important biologically, alkoxide, and the negatively charged nitrogen leaving group. This may have uh, alkyl groups or hydrogens. These are carboxylic acid derivatives. The halides are called acyl halides. This is called an anhydride. The next one is a thioester. Thio means sulfur. And when it's an oxygen here, it's a regular ester. And these are called amides. And for the cases where we have a negatively charged nucleophile, we're talking about carboxylate or alkoxide. The nucleophile doesn't have to be negatively charged. And key nucleophiles in this list that we should talk about are alcohols and amines. When we have a neutral nucleophile that has an extra hydrogen attached to it, we'll also have to say plus H plus in the product. And that hydrogen may or may not be attached to the leaving group, depending on what it is. So there are two reactions that are mechanistically very similar. One occurs when the nucleophiles are negatively charged, and the other with neutral nucleophiles. Let me show you the basic mechanism when we have negatively charged nucleophiles. Addition of the nucleophile to the carbonyl occurs just like we saw for aldehydes and ketones. The intermediate form has four things attached to the carbon that was the carbonyl carbon. And in a second step, that pi bond reforms as the leaving group leaves. This is a two-step substitution reaction. Addition, elimination. Now, as you might guess, the step that requires formation of negative charge on that oxygen is slower than the step where we regenerate a neutral molecule to see a good leaving group depart. So this first step can be labeled as slower, and this is faster. And that's important because to understand the relative rates of this nucleophilic acyl substitution, we need to look at the slow step. That is the rate determining step. So things that affect the rate of the reaction are things that affect that first step, how fast the addition occurs. And as you would predict, the things that affect the rate of the reaction are how reactive the nucleophile is, the better the nucleophile, the faster the reaction, and how unstable, how reactive that carbonyl compound is. Because the leaving group departs in the faster step that is not involved in the rate determining step, the relative leaving group ability is not important in determining the rate. It's very easy to get confused on this, so let me just repeat it. If somebody asks you why this reaction is faster with certain leaving groups, it's not because of leaving group ability. It's because of the effect of the leaving group on the reactivity of the carboxylic acid derivative. Now, given a certain nucleophile, we can focus our attention on the relative reactivity of the carboxylic acid derivatives themselves. If this sounds like we should look at a standard energy diagram, you're right. The rate of a reaction is determined by the activation energy in its slow step. That's the first step in this reaction, and I've written a curve for that first step here. There's the transition state. The facts are, as we vary that leaving group from chloride to carboxylate to thiolate, alkoxide, and finally the amide, reaction rates are faster at the top and slower at the bottom. And in fact, the differences in reaction rates are dramatic. These compounds called amides are very unreactive and very stable. The compounds called acyl chlorides are very reactive, unstable. So we'll proceed down this list from faster to slower. There are two factors at work. Take a look. The leaving groups all have heteroatoms attached to the carbonyl carbon. 
there are more electronegative than carbon and pull electron density from it. The carbonyl carbon already is polarized and this polarizing of this bond here enhances that effect. So there's greater positive charge on that carbonyl carbon and negative charge toward the leaving group. This enhances the reactivity of the carbonyl toward nucleophiles and it destabilizes the compound. Now it turns out that the halides have the strongest pull and are most destabilizing. Oxygen is less and nitrogen is least. So the order we see here fits our picture of reactivities. The most reactive is the acyl chloride and the chlorine is the strongest electron withdrawer. The amide is the least reactive, most stable, and the nitrogen is the least of the electron withdrawing groups. But there's another factor as well, and it turns out it works in the same direction. Take a look at this. There's a partial positive charge on carbon. It can be stabilized by sharing of a pair of electrons on this heteroatom while these electrons move up and the pi bond breaks. This resonance factor significantly stabilizes that partial positive charge on carbon. So the carbon becomes less reactive toward nucleophiles and the molecule itself becomes more stable. For resonance effects, the chlorine is the least effective, oxygen is more so, and nitrogen is the most effective. So I'm gonna put electron withdrawal here and resonance here. This is the least stabilizing this is more stabilizing, and nitrogen is the most stabilizing. So nitrogen is the most stabilizing, while it's the least destabilizing. So it's no surprise that amides are the most stable carboxylic acid derivatives. To put it another way, the nitrogen has the effect of stabilizing that molecule. So the activation energy for that initial step is greater. The reaction is slower. On the other hand, the chlorine has the strongest pull destabilizing the molecule and the least resonant sharing, so it helps to stabilize it the least. As a result, for the acyl chlorides, we have a molecule that is less stable, so we have a smaller activation energy. So it's easy to understand the relative reactivity of the carboxylic acid derivatives. The first step is the slow step, so we focus on that. As we change the leaving group that's attached to the carbonyl. We change the ability of that leaving group to stabilize the carbonyl and we change the ability of it to destabilize the carbonyl. Chlorine destabilizes the carbonyl the most and stabilizes it the least through resonance. So the net effect is we have a less stable molecule, a smaller activation energy, and a faster reaction. As we move down the list we get to amides which are the most stable the nitrogen has the least destabilizing effect through electron withdrawal and the most stabilizing effect through resonance sharing. Okay, so that's the story on the relative reactivity of carboxylic acid derivatives with respect to nucleophilic acyl substitution. That's a very important reaction of carboxylic acid derivatives, so it's important to understand this. At the same time, there's another factor that you need to also understand. These reactions are not irreversible reactions. I've marked these arrows in yellow to correspond with the arrow pushing I'm showing. A nucleophile adds to the carbonyl to form the tetrahedral intermediate. Then the leaving group leaves to form the product. As the leaving group departs, it becomes negatively charged. There's an extra unshared pair of electrons. This reaction can happen in the opposite direction. And now I'll use tan arrows to show the electron pushing to designate the opposite direction so as that pair of electrons adds to carbon, that pi bond is broken, and we form that same tetrahedral intermediate. Working in the reverse direction, as those pair of electrons swing down to form a pi bond, it's the nucleophile that leaves to reform the nucleophile in the original starting material. It's important to understand the reversibility of this reaction because the carboxylic acid derivatives are very different in their stabilities and you know that equilibrium reactions favor more stable products. This means that the less stable carboxylic acid derivatives can be converted into the more stable carboxylic acid derivatives in yields that are synthetically useful. As we make a list of the practical transformations that take advantage of the fact that some carboxylic acids are more stable than the others, some are more reactive than the others, 
This is the common list that you should know. ACL chlorides are on top. The anhydrides are next. The esters are next. And amides are at the bottom. And remember, these may be hydrogens. The ACL halides are least stable and therefore most reactive. And in synthetic chemistry, we capitalize on this order. We can convert carboxylic acid derivatives that are higher on the list to ones on the lower in the list. And in practice, we typically use acyl chlorides and anhydrides to make esters and amides.